Peter, he never really got committed until the day of Pentecost. Do you know that? Even as late as almost the crucifixion, he said to Jesus one day, Lord, he said to me, I'll skidoo on you. I mean, get out of here, but I want to tell you something. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And Lord he said, before the cock gets through having his trip. <laughs> See? <laughs> so, that's right. The boy came the day of Pentecost, and he heard himself speak in tongues. He knew something he had never realized before. And from that day on, boy, old Peter really took a stand. That's why after Pentecost, Peter became the leader of the body of believers along with John, not before. Because he, after the day of Pentecost, no longer had a mental ascent. He had a commitment. Now, people say, look, a tremendous abundance, even though he didn't carry out God's word. That's perfectly wonderful. But that doesn't invalidate the fact he didn't carry out God's word. Sure, they caught a whole bunch of fish. But his business was fishing. He made his living by fishing. He had to catch fish in order to sell them so he could take care of his wife and children and the other needs of the family. They caught a whole bunch of fish that morning. Maybe they didn't have to fish for the next week. They could just go out and witness, do a WOW program for a week because they got enough income off of that one little bit. What would have happened had they let all the nets out? First of all, they might still be drawing all the fish in if Peter hadn't died by now. <laughs> <laughs> Secondly, they might have caught enough that he wouldn't have to go fishing for three months or six, and he could have been out studying the Word, witnessing, holding forth God's Word. You see, the other side of the coin is this, spiritually. <coughs> there is no person living who has ever made anything available to Jesus Christ who has not been repaid with multiple interest. Simon loaned him his boat. Jesus paid it back with a great multitude of fish, even though he did not literally carry out the word. There's not a person in the core. There's not a person as a W.O.W. or a minute man or a believer any place in the world who has dedicated himself or what he has to the Lord Jesus Christ, but the Lord has paid it back with interest. That's why they got that multitude of fish. Not because they literally obeyed God's word, but because he had borrowed the boat. And you can't loan anything to the Lord Jesus Christ, but that he pays it back. A little boy came along one day and gave him, what, a few loaves and some fishes? <laughs> And Jesus went around feeding thousands. And I think they picked up 12 baskets full or something of it yet. The little boy got so blessed. You, it's a law in life if you're a believer. That's why the abundance of the fish. Well, look what else happened. <laughs> For he was astonished, verse 9. That means he was flabbergasted, his eyeballs flipped. And all that were with him at the draw of fishes which they had taken. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus, now listen to this, Jesus said unto Simon, Why didn't you believe me? No. He said unto him, Fear not. First word, sounds like the foundational class. Do you know why people just mentally assent and do not get committed? Because of fear. Because of fear. If you are not committed to God's Word, just look for the fear in your life. That's what's stopping you from committing yourself. So Jesus went right to the root of the problem, and he said, Okay, Peter, what you afraid of? Fear not. Fear not. Wherever people have fear, they will not be committed to God's word. They will only mentally assent. Then Jesus said, From henceforth thou shalt catch men. You cannot catch men, really, as long as you have fear. As long as you are just mentally assenting to God's word, you cannot really catch men because men are only caught when you are committed to God's word. 
The greatest thing has to be the love of God shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. It's the love of God that draws people. You have to learn to let people walk on your own, on your feet until they learn to walk on their own. You have to be broken bread for people until they learn to break their own. You have to love the unlovable. <laughs> if let people walk on you until they learn to walk on the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a fantastic thing. Someone once said you can catch more flies with honey than vinegar. Well, you can catch more people for God with the love of God than you ever can with raising hell with them. Sure, Peter had it coming. Everybody knows Peter had it coming, but who hasn't got it coming? <laughs> See? <laughs> That's right. So it's not a matter of that, we ha that we've got it coming. It's a matter of the love of God that's shed abroad. And God so loved that he what? Yeah. His only begotten son. You and I have to so love that we give. That's how we catch people, with that love of God in the renewed mind. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. The critics have used that, especially some groups, and said, look, when you really get to be a Christian, you sell everything and give it to the church, or to give it to the group. That's a bunch of baloney. That's an absolute bunch of baloney. It doesn't say they sold all and followed him. It said what? They forsook all. There's a lot of difference between forsaking and selling. That's right. Peter made his living by those boats. If he'd have sold them and given all the money to the Lord Jesus Christ to use in benevolence, what would Peter have had to live on? Then somebody would have to give him benevolence the next week. See? No, no. God has never asked anybody to sell what they need. He only asks them to get rid of their greed, not what they need. Never asked Peter to give up his boats because after the resurrection, Peter went back fishing, all of this stuff, because that's how he made a living, working at the fishing business. But to forsake all means that he got the lesson drilled in his head that God comes first. No matter what happens, if you fished all night and you know everything about fishing, when God says something, it still comes first. So he forsook all, and from that day on, if you read it in the Word, Whenever Jesus wanted to go to the mountains, he says, Come on, Peter and Andrew and John, let's go up in the mountains. They went, let the boat set. God came first through Jesus Christ. That's forsaking all and followed him. That's what it means. That's why people were talking about the difference between commitment and mental assent. And if the people of the Way Corps don't get to the commitment, then I just don't know where it's going to be. And yet it's going to be, because somebody's always going to believe. Because God is never going to be without a witness, that's for sure. And in order to be that kind of witness, you've got to get committed to God's Word. If the whole world thinks we're crazy, that doesn't make us crazy. If the whole world laughs at us or stick their butts out of the windows at us, that doesn't make us a horse's ass. <laughs> That's right. They're the ones that got their butts out of the window, not us. <laughs> Sometimes you wish they got close to a telephone pole or something. <laughs> but it just shows how asinine people are. <laughs> Spell that one. <laughs> you see, that but I feel sorry for them. <coughs> I feel sorry for Christians <coughs> born again, but just mentally assenting to Christianity, not really ever getting committed to it. You're going to hear a lot of talk this fall about how wonderful it is to be religious. The elections are coming, don't you know that? These son of a guns maybe haven't been to church in years. They're going to go now. And they're going to tell you how wonderful Roman Catholics they are, Protestant, or something else. They'll even contribute to good causes. All because they're looking. That's just mental assent. That's not commitment. And in the least common denominator, it's damn dishonest. It is better to stand up and say, no, I don't believe in Christianity or the Lord Jesus Christ 
than to say, yeah, that's a nice little trip and not do anything about it. Because someplace in the Word it says he'd rather have us hot or cold than just lukewarm. I think it's in the book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. Boy, oh boy. So let's get with it.